Travis Campbell began his career as a summer hire for Texas Department of Transportation and worked for three consecutive summers in the Lufkin District. Travis is a graduate of A&M. He began full-time employment as an engineer in training at TxDOT in June in 2010 in roadway design. Let's welcome everyone, Travis Campbell. Thank you very much. Um, I appreciate the, the introduction and the invitation to be here today and, and speak about 345 um, and also appreciate Gus. I know he's going to get up here in a minute and introduce himself, uh, but this this is definitely, this is a tech stop project, but there, there's there's no doubt we've really worked with the city of Dallas and the community and, and the, the county and really you know, everybody really pushed to, to kind of hear what is needed and what is, uh, you know, the, the community's goals for this project. So I guess first, let's kind of start show of hands. Does anybody know where 345 is? That's, that's good. That's better than some presentations, about <laughs> half. So we're, we're making progress, guys. We're getting there. Um, so 345, and we'll go to the next slide, please. Um, we got a map, so the quiz won't last long. Um, so 345, you won't see a lot of signs for it. It is a very short segment of interstate freeway. Uh, it is between I-30 and Woodall Rogers to the north, and it connects I-45 to the south to US-75 to the north. So it, the eastern side of the downtown business core, E. Bellum is on the east side of it, and you know, obviously head over to Hare Park, so it's right in between there. Uh, been in the area, it's an elevated freeway, right? So it's got, uh, it's all bridge, it's all um, on structure for what we say, but it's all up in the air, and then the cross streets go underneath it. So this is I-345 as it is today. Again, you won't see a lot of signs for it because you'll see signs that go to US-75 or go 230 because it is just about a mile, a little over a mile stretch of freeway. Um, so let's go to the next slide, please. I'll kind of, it's long, so I'll, I'll run through. I'll, I'll try, won't get bogged down in the details today. Uh, kind of quickly, you know, let me kind of set the stage of where we are. Um, it's tech stop projects and roadway projects when you work for tech stop or local governments. Um, they kind of follow the same steps, and so we start feasibility study, and this one even had you know, a feasibility study plus, and I'll hit that in just a minute, but feasibility study is a 30,000 foot view, uh, kind of understanding the needs of the project and what's the purpose and what's it going to look like. Then we move to schematic and environmental, and that's a detailed study of the engineering, looking into the environmental constraints, um, the, the following the NEPA process, which is the federal regulations that TxDOT needs to follow. Um, and then ultimately we move into kind of the third phase, which is the detailed construction plans after we get environmental clearance. And so there's kind of three levels. We just finished feasibility study. So we've, we've gone through that and I'll kind of walk through that study and the results of that today. And we're just starting that kind of phase two, if you will, the schematic and environmental phase. We kicked that off about two weeks ago. Um, we kicked it off with the city about a week ago. And so we're, we're getting uh, started and continuing into this process to get down to the detailed construction plan. So let's go to the next slide, please. Um, so real quick, I'll hit some terms you may have heard from surrounding. This, this 345 has been being talked about for a long time. And so if you've been brought that conversation, there was city map. So city map was even a higher level feasibility study. So that was a large study that looked at the downtown um, connection, the, the system of freeways. So not just 345, looked at 30, looked at Woodall, looked at uh, 35E, and kind of looked at all of those things. And so the 345 feasibility count study was born out of that. And so what we were able to do is, uh, you got a clicker? There we go, we're getting more advanced. Um, so so this, this 345 study was born out of city maps. Again, city map was a broader view of the downtown area focused on mobility, connectivity, sustainability, and economic development. And, and the main things I want to hit today is there's really four key goals carried forward from city map. Mobility, connectivity, sustainability, and economic development. And so, you know, I, I think the message we want to continue to get out there is text out is vehicles, and it is, we, that's the mobility component, but really we want to talk about economic development. Again, those four bullet points work. We're not just focused in the vehicles. We want to work with the city and the local uh, stakeholders, businesses, property owners, people that use it, people that use the area. Uh, what what can we do to enhance it? You know, yes, the vehicles need to move through there, but what, what enhancements can we do? So that's really been a focus of this is we're, we're not just talking vehicles. It's pedestrians, it's bikes, it's, it's public spaces, how are we using those things? So, 
those, those goals move from city map into the feasibility study. And again, why we're studying it, uh, the, these bridges are, um, we're, you know, we're, we're doing improvements on them now, but eventually in the next 25 to 30 years, uh, they will need to be replaced. And so that this is not a study that just happens overnight. You know, we can't wait 25 years mm -hmm. and say it's time to replace these bridges. Uh, this is something that, you know, city map has gone on several years prior, and this study will continue several years in the future. So we have to make these decisions now, and we want time to make the right decision. We don't want to rush it. So uh, that's why we're studying it now. Um, we, we made repairs to 345 bridges. We're making some more. And so um, they, these will continue their service life, uh, but as we continue to plan for the future. So here's a map, uh, again, we'll spend a ton of time on this one, but this is basically just showing environmental constraints. So this is a map, you see uh, the red is kind of our study area that went wider than the project footprint. So we, 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 uh, we listed places, cemeteries and schools, places of worship, historic register, historical mark, uh, markers and things like that, just to make sure we knew what was around us. And part of public involvement, and we'll hit that just one, is just what did we miss? Did we miss the cemetery? Did we miss something that's historic? So. Uh, trying to make sure we're capturing all those things. Uh, public involvement for this uh, was a big effort, right? Um, this is a very unique freeway in that, uh, let, let's just give a very basic example for Dexcon. FM roadway, uh, you know, outside of town, you, you've got the users typically of that roadway in that community. Um, 345 not only services the folks that live and work there, but also folks that may live south of Dallas and they're traveling to north of Dallas. You may get folks that do that daily on commute. You may have folks traveling north to south. You may have somebody that does it once a month that may try from Oklahoma to Houston and they do that facility. And so that's a big net to cast. How do we reach all those folks? Because it's not just the folks that are there, it's those users of that freeway. And so um, we, we tried to be as innovative as we could. We used some technology that lets you use geofence. And so it was able to put some apps into cell phones, you know, technology is amazing, right? And so if you drive it, it, it pings your phone and you get an ad that says, hey, you should look at this 345 study. Uh, we used our big message boards on top of the freeway. And so we really tried to reach, um, and we got 1,300 surveys back in 2019. The first public involvement was really, okay, here was city map. It, it did not make a recommendation of what to do with 345. It said, here are four options that you could do with 345. You should investigate it further. And so what we did in the first study, the first public involvement was, what do you want to see? Are these the right options? Are there other options? What, what, are, what should be on the table for us to go back and chart our opinion? Um, the key takeaway uh, that we saw, and again, kind of jumping around, that bottom chart is about a third of our third folks, folks wanted us to investigate the options in city map. And I'll run through those here in just a moment. Uh, but we, we felt that our first public involvement, we were at least on the right track with the public's expectations of what we need. Uh, this is really important for this project. The things that matter to people, community cohesion, you've got the downtown core on the west side, you've got the on the east side. There's a, the, there, you talk to a lot of folks, they think that elevated freeway is a barrier right now between those two communities, so community cohesion. Um, traffic concerns, you're talking to a lot of folks, there is a lot of traffic use this freeway, what's gonna happen to it? Did we make it worse, did we make it better? Uh, pedestrian safety, again, crossing, not just talking about vehicles, pedestrians and bicycles crossing the freeway, improving their accessibility and uh, mobility across there, and economic development potential. But a big thing for us impacts the access between South and Northern Dallas, so making sure that that link uh, was not severed. We heard that repeatedly, time and time again, is that we don't want that link, link severed between the two communities, North and South of Dallas. So we continued, uh, we, with that information, we, we studied the four options. We had another public engagement, and um, I'll kind of jump through um, several rounds of public involvement. Uh, here's some more statistics, again, kind of refer, reaffirming those, those high points that we did right here. But I'll jump to this. So this is ultimately what we considered. No bill to leave as is in any of our studies. One of the options is to, to leave alone. Depressed alternative, so quickly running through these, this alternative um, was Similar to US 75, um, where you've got the main lanes down low and you've got frontage roads that run along the sides of it, and they're up on the higher level with the development. Uh, removal was the option that looked at removing the freeway entirely and going back to the boulevard option. Uh, elevated alternative looked at the uh, keeping it, reconstructing it, um, you know, and not necessarily leaving it as is, reconstructing it, reconfiguring the ramping, but ultimately leaving it elevated. 
And then the hybrid is what came out of a lot of these conversations. A hybrid is similar to the depressed alternative. And you know, if you want to jump the gun, this is what ultimately came out as the final recommendation from the feasibility study was this hybrid. Very similar to depressed, but rather than having a front of road network like you would see that runs alongside most freeways, it favored the street grid. So you, you still have your depressed main, grid, main lanes, but it favored reconnecting the city street grid on top of us. And so rather than having those frontage roads, we really focused in. I've got a picture of it here in just a moment. Uh, kind of just some conceptual images, just quickly to run through. That, that is the way it is today. That was the no build. Here's the depressed alternative. And I'll kind of highlight, you can see the green on either side of the yellow. That's those frontage roads I'm talking about. So the, the main lanes are down low, that's the yellow. City streets going across in purple, and the green is the main lane. I want to bring attention to kind of show you the difference between this and the hybrid that ultimately became the recommended alignment. This was the removal that removed the freeway and ultimately um, went back with some boulevard option there. Elevated, similar to what's out there today, reconfigured ramping, but very similar. And ultimately, and again, I know I'm going fast through this, this hybrid is what came out as the recommended alternative. Um, and a few of those reasons, you can see that the green is not so much in this picture, you see more of the purple. And so that was really, and Gus will probably go into it as well, but that was really a lot of conversation with the city of Dallas, is favoring the street grid network versus the frontage roads. So we, we there, there are small segments up on the north end, but the majority you can see right here is the purple of the city street grid that gets kind of knitted across the freeway. Um, getting those ma yellow main lines are down low. Uh, they, the, the negligible impact and mobility, so, you keep your connectivity between north and south. We're improving the pedestrians. So we saw this uh, again through the study as the option that was able to meet the majority of the public's goals uh, and the city's goals and TxDOT's goals uh, in, in what we would do with this freeway. Real quick, this is getting in the weeds, so I won't spend a lot of time here. Traffic, uh, tremendous amount of traffic investigation, understanding what would happen with each one of these alternatives down to the ramp. Um, and ultimately we used the origin destination. And so even more than traffic, okay, how many cars are there daily, we use what we call origin destination. And there's a really good picture here. And this is one of about 20 slides. I didn't want to worry all of this. I only put a couple in here. Uh, but what we were able to do with this, this uh, they call it streetlight technology, um, is we were able to see folks that were using the freeway, not only how many people were using but where they were coming from and where they were going and so that allowed us to kind of put a picture together of who was using the freeway and why and so that that was very helpful in understanding the impacts of what we were trying to do and so again there's a ton of slides here but you can see here in the colors you know folks uh, that origin map is on the left and so southeast uh, was headed to northeast uh, and, and northwest again the, the, the majority of these and so there's a, a lot of these you've got folks in the northwest quadrant heading to the southeast quadrant using that origin, origin destination. These are people that drive on 345. Um, this is too small to see. I really encourage you, we've got our website up here, keepitmovingdallas.com slash I345. Uh, if you've got the interest, please go, there is a wealth of information. But this is the alternative matrix, ultimately that, uh, that showed that hybrid alternative being that preferred, uh, recommended alignment. Um, and I'll, I'll jump down to the bottom, hybrid alternative. The alternative was the best compromise to combine elements from the other alternatives based on public feedback. And again, this is a this is a working so the the, the alignment we believe is recommended, uh, but we're still working with the city of Dallas. So I said this this process is continuing. So the feasibility kind of honed in on which one we're moving forward with, uh, but we're really still kicking off with the city of Dallas and honing, uh, fine tuning, uh, making that alignment really work the best it can. Um, Here's some more specifics, but again, a lot of these are direct inputs from Gus and his team and the folk, the other teams at the city of Dallas, uh, connections that might have been severed, and hey, we, we got to have that when we can, and so we're really, we're doing our best to work and continue to refine this thing. D2 also comes through our, our project, and so um, we don't, you know, we, we, we're moving forward, D2's moving forward, so we're making sure we don't preclude one or the other. Uh, D2 is a dark project, if y'all are not familiar. Sorry, I'm trying to make sure we get all those. Uh, so ultimately, that was a recommended alignment. Uh, this one is kind of just showing the roadmap. The red is where we're at the feasibility study. We'll move into the green, the schematic, and environmental. But then we'll move into detailed construction plans and right away, we'll, again, no right away, and utilities. Uh, made me think of a good point because going through my normal spiel. Um, no right away with this project. And so every alternative is really, 
important one, I should have said at the beginning. Uh, every alternative we looked at did not require additional right of uh, Everyone we were working within our footprint, and in fact, one of the, uh, again, being a very unique project in many ways, one of the ones we looked at was how much uh, space uh, would not be used by the roadway when we were completing it. So that's, again, conversations we're having with the city uh, very often. That's our website. Highly encourage you if you want to know more. Um, please go check it out. We've got videos. We have a lot of information there. And that is what I've got. And I'll leave this for you. Yes. Wow. Go